Witcher, a series I can't express how amazing it is to you, if you don't already know about it. My love for The Witcher began with The Witcher 2 on PC. I was drawn into the world like a moth to a flame, ignorant of the books behind the game. With The Witcher 3 at first, I admit felt the combat was overly simplified for new players, but it was still CD Projekt Red's masterpiece. How they went from Witcher 3 to Cyberpunk and dropped the ball so hard is mind-blowing. That's what you get for trying to make a next-gen game on a PS4. I was such a fan of the Witcher games. They used to do video mods covering all the new fan-made material for the Witcher 3 as any excuse to continue playing the game. Oh, this is funny. He's gay. My friend Az, not the one on FNT, convinced me to check out the books. And I strongly suggest you do the same and the game. The adventures that Geralt had were nothing short of enthralling. The world building, the storytelling, the characters, the political intrigue, the monsters. Andrei Sapkowski is a genius, even if he's a terrible businessman and somewhat incredibly bitter towards the games that brought him all of this fame. But then again, if I sold the rights to something I made for like 12 grand in a sandwich and CD Projekt Red came in and made millions off of it, I'd be pissed too. But to be fair, they did offer him residuals and a better deal. But Sokowski was like, no, you gave me the money up front. No one wants this. I bet that dude punches himself in the dick every day. When I heard Netflix was doing a show based on The Witcher, I immediately turned up my nose at it because I knew what would happen. I knew what was going to become of it. I don't care if Henry Cavill was in it. I knew it couldn't be saved. And my bias has been vindicated yet again. When Henry Cavill started talking about how he had to keep the showrunners close to the source material in the lore, I then realized I vastly underestimated the hubris and how far this show could go off the rails. I mean, Star Trek Picard, Lord of the Rings, <laughs> Star Wars. Lauren Histrich is the new Kathleen Kennedy. I don't know what's up with modern Hollywood putting women in positions of power over IPs they clearly don't care about, but it keeps happening. I like God do not play with dice and do not believe in coincidence. After the launch of the Rings of Power in their disastrous first season, they decided to double down with what I can remember being an all-female directing team for next season. I don't smell failure there. It is crazy. We say to give a woman, woman power is like to give a gun to a monkey. <laughs> we have stopped doing that ever since the 1999 Astana Zoo Massacre. The second Cavill walked away from The Witcher, he began getting dragged on Twitter by the usual prog suspects. Isn't it ironic? If a woman leaves a bad situation, she's a hero. If a man leaves a bad situation, he's toxic and red-pilled. Too long didn't read. Henry Cavill got gamer red-pilled and became impossible to work with. The female showrunners of The Witcher and many female employees were treated like garbage. And it also made producing the show impossible. And the, and the game and everything. Apparently on set, you know more than anyone else. I, I wouldn't necessarily say anyone else, but I, I am yes. a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big <laughs> yes. fan. I'm a big fan. Yeah. So do you correct people? Um, I don't necessarily... <laughs> I, I am effusive about getting the... Uh, being, being loyal to the source material. Let's put it that way. Okay. Yeah. Someone who actually knows what's going on and is like, hey, listen, this is like how it went in the book. I don't know what you guys are doing here, but you see, this is how it's supposed to be. And they were probably like, oh, my God, Henry Cavill. He's such an incel. He's <laughs> red pilled. Oh, mansplaining. I think I know what Geralt would do, Mr. Cavill. I spent a whole five minutes watching video reviews of the game. Do you want to know what really went down? And I was like, sure. So let me just read it. It says, at the beginning of the show, Henry was good to work with and a lot of unusual demands that made people feel like he wasn't really a team player. But that's not unusual for a big star. Although in TV, it truly usually doesn't happen until the second season. But the second and third, something shifted. He became really impossible to, for women to work with, which is always a big problem. But even worse here, because the showrunner is a woman, he would try to overrule her and try to get changes made last minute across the board without her knowledge. Damn it, Henry Cavill. How dare you do your own improvised roast death scene? Which, if you know anything about the show running, 
It's completely f And the showrunner had to sign off on every minuscule detail down to the buttons of the costume. I couldn't believe it. Henry Cavill was like, these buttons don't look accurate to what the Witcher would wear. And I was like, Henry, Michelle went all the way to Michael's to find those buttons. Female writers and directors were suddenly completely ignored on set, unable to do their jobs. Every department head was complaining. He started making comments. It wasn't a sexual thing. He wasn't grabbing anyone or being lewd, but it was disrespectful and toxic all the same. He's deeply addicted to video games. Uh-oh. <laughs> to the point where it was like working with another... A what? Any other addict? He was distracted. He was late. He was obsessive. And a lot of people think that the misogyny came from gamer world. Video game bro language is not how you talk to coworkers. And he wouldn't stop. Someone on the show compared it to watching get brainwashed by QAnon? Like this whole personality shift, eventually his disrespect escalated. Jesus H. Christ. He probably like played the game for some references for better costume design. And they were like, oh my God, Henry Cavill is in deep with Gamergate. He would rewrite scenes without even <laughs> alerting the other actor in the scene until it was time to shoot. He decided that he didn't want any romance scenes at all. No kissing, no shirtless scenes, except he wanted complete control of storylines, but really had no idea of the limitations of TV, structure, budget, except. Okay, so Henry Cavill not wanting to get ass naked. That's toxic. But uh, Charlie is to stay around or whoever played Black Widow running around and complaining about being groomed to be a bombshell. All of a sudden, everybody needs to write articles and say how brave she is. My God, the double standards are amazing. He formed a weird alliance with one writer who was also a gamer who eventually got fired after multiple HR complaints were made. Is that the guy who's working on the X-Men cartoon who demands everybody sticks to canon? Wow, what a bigot. Eventually, top brass at Netflix was tired of him costing them money with delays in HR investigations, and the showrunner was asked to construct a potential exit for him. Netflix reached out to him personally, and he was given one final warning, and violates the warning with an email he sent the entire writing staff right after the meeting. That was it. How is it Netflix was worried about the money he would lose them for this, but the, the Witcher prequel... They looked at it and said, oh yeah, this is gold. This is solid gold. Seven warriors, outcasts, strangers to each other, bound together to fight an unstoppable empire. This is the future under the empire. And then we- <laughs> Cavill improvised death of Roach scene. You know, where his horse dies. And if I recall correctly, he was meant to tell some sort of joke about his beloved horse dying. That's a clear indication that the people in charge didn't give a rat's ball sack about the show that they were working on. Strong emotional bond, especially when that horse is, is has such a, a soul to it and such a kind, um, try hard, uh, work hard uh, mentality. And so anything when it comes to emotional scenes like that, they become incredibly powerful for me personally. I hate to use this phrase so often, but the show reeks of intersectional feminism. And if I hear made for modern audiences one more time, I'll puke. Good luck GTA 6, or should I call it bootleg Fortnite? Oh, by the way, have you seen the gay show writer who's drunk on power and a fistful of Twitter likes? If there's one thing I'm definitely gonna do, it's put all of my queer trauma into every single thing that I write. Marshall has no moral compass. He is a rat. Uh, here's the scene from the show. Guess what? I'm not reading it. I, I'm not. I don't care. Much like Ru Margot Rubio's career, I don't care. Because I know what this is going to be. It's going to be a whole bunch of flipping nothing that for some reason this guy is overly proud of. Oh, fantastic. Somebody's at the door. One of my favorite scenes I wrote in season two, thinking about how Francesca made the flower bloom and then gave it to Fringella. I, I can't even say the name correctly and I don't care. Hashtag the Witcher. Who cares? You know what else bothers me? This is like a Germanic sort of story. Norse, Norwegian. You know, it's definitely in a place where there's no black people. But I'll be damned if I don't see a black witch or something or black elves or Chinese elves. Like, what's up with that? 
Why are we doing this? Hey, here's an idea. Here's a, here. What, why don't we do Last of the Mohicans again? Except everybody is Latin American <laughs> Jamaican. Can I say that, Stu? By the way, I'm being facetious. There's no such thing as Mohicans. Originally, the writer got confused and used Mohegans and Mohicans and put them together into World War II. Two totally different tribes. Nobody cares, though. It's Native American stuff. My God, this show reeks of more self-inserts than I don't even have an analogy for. All the carnage unfolded right before Christmas, and it has come to a head now. The reviews are in, and The Witcher Netflix prequel Blood Origins. That's the title? Whatever. The show is a total tax write-off and maybe some diversity quota throwaway projects. The trailer alone was more effective at removing rats from my garage than Raid has ever been. I've been playing it on loop. My neighbors now call me the Pipe Goddamn Piper. Admittedly, I did take a small look at the show with the same morbid fascination I have with taking a look at my own shit before I flush it. And I wasn't disappointed. This is a steaming turd. If you want someone to watch the rest of the series and give you a blow by blow for this scary great storytelling, I suggest you watch The Dranker. But since I quit drinking, I quit watching about 15 minutes in. $14 well spent, says I. I'm going to check with my account to see if watching these streaming services and doing videos are tax write-offs at this point, because I'm sure as hell not paying for the content. The red carpet for their Witcher Blood Origins was the perfect amalgamation for the show in and of itself. So, I'll make you suffer through that. You deserve as much for not getting me to a million subscribers. Stu, where's this godforsaken clip? I can give you a thousand. The cars are insane. The action is fierce. It's got Michelle Yeoh, who is, I mean, you already know that, but she's just incredible. It's set a thousand years before The Witcher. It explores part of the lore of The Witcher that hasn't been explored before. There are monsters like we've never seen before. It has the first, uh, Kiss between two men in the show. Right. The costumes are divine. The makeup, the hair. Bon appetit. There's a deaf sign language using character. It's a show that's made with so much love, and that's really fun. The show made with so much love. They loved the show so goddamn much, they completely ignored the lure and they came up with their own world. It's obvious the Witcher Blood Origins is what the showrunners and writers originally wanted to make free of Henry Cavill. They're like, now we shall tell the story we want to tell. Just like, just like Rings of Power. The absolute, you have to be out of your mind to sit there and go, oh, we were gonna write a Lord of the Rings show that Tolkien would have wrote. No, no, if you could do that, you'd have your own show, you talentless hack. Cut that out, Stu. I'm absolutely so sick of all of this. Like the amount of people that seem to get jobs in Hollywood that haven't got the, the haven't got a shred of talent or clue of what the hell to do. Do you know why these shows suck? Because they're ruled by committee. It's a bunch of numb nuts and nimrods that live in the upper areas of LA. The rest of the city is turning into Mad Max, and these people are up in city skyrise buildings coming up with these fanciful ideas. Oh, in the medieval times of Europe, there was tons of black people. My God, it'd be like doing African, it'd be like doing Shaka Zulu, but it was starring Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds is Shaka Zulu. <laughs> People wouldn't stand for it. I'd watch it though. Okay, cut that out, Stu. No. Hopefully the first gay kiss in the Witcher series is enough to cement you going to watch this horrible show. And don't take my word for the show being bad. Rotten Tomatoes critics and fans are united for the first time ever in saying that this show sucks, but I'm 100% sure it'll be spun into toxic masculinity, Gamergate, insert bad people here, Istin phobes. It's not that the fact that the show had bad casting, bad writing, bad directing, bad costume design, bad ideas, no. It was those stupid people at home that are so racist that they couldn't accept Michelle Yao as an Asian elf. Did you know she's badass and a woman? But then again, what is a woman? You better not ask, because you'll be a bigot. Frankly, I've seen better acting and more believable storylines in backyard wrestling, but that's just me.